Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So in tonight's video is going to be something a little bit different because I'm going to be attempting to explain some things about a video that I made and it's actually the third video that I'm doing on this and it's the Alter Bridge performance at the Royal Albert Hall. I did a first video that show that there was pitch correction happening and then I did a second video to show again that there was pitch correction happening and that it was the same night's audio even though I said that in the first video but then you know I, I zoomed in and showed everybody that we had exactly the same audio that then had been pitch corrected so now I'm going to be addressing some comments that have been made that are still questioning that video and I'm going to do my best to explain it because I think it's really important when people have genuine questions and, and thoughts about a particular analysis video especially when they speak with an authority on the subject and they're obviously educated about it I think it's very important for me to because my videos are objective to take on all questions and be able to answer them for these people that even though they might have a, a background in music or music production or sound it's important that they understand what we're looking at but also to explain how what they're saying isn't applicable and just to clarify this isn't like a, a troll corner thing that we do on the live streams these are just genuine questions and points that are being made in the comment section so this person said playing devil's advocate here but if an individual concludes that no other explanation for an event could possibly exist because that one person isn't aware of another explanation that conclusion comes from flawed logic and I understand what this person is saying but I I consider a lot of things in my analysis video and I am going to be jumping into his comment that's just underneath this so he says actually there is at least one other explanation with more distance between the singer and the recording device there may be a Doppler effect caused by air moving towards the singer whether from outdoor wind or electric fans and possibly even sound waves if any speakers are facing towards the singer can cause the Doppler effect and lower the pitch as the sound travels more slowly towards the phone that was recording this in the audience there isn't enough distance between the vocalist and his microphone for the same Doppler effect to occur. That's my theory for what it's worth. So I do know about the Doppler effect and I've even explained it in other videos and maybe even on a live stream as well. And I'll probably explain it in this um, to help with my point. But the point being that I know about it, but it's absolutely not applicable to what we're watching. And, and the fact that we've got a phone which is filming a performance that isn't moving and the sound coming out of the speakers, the speakers aren't moving. So anyway, the Doppler effect, if you are you know, at a NASCAR race or an F1 race and a car goes past you, it goes, Vroom! so it changes pitch. Why does it change pitch? Because when you're, when you're standing next to the car, it doesn't change pitch, it maintains its pitch. So what's happening? So when if you imagine that sound waves like this going up and down are like a coil if you hold that coil together like this the coil remains where it is and imagine that sound is the frequencies are the coils like this so now if i gave you one end of this coil and or attached it to a car and it sped off what's going to happen to that coil it's now going to elongate the frequency waves are going to get longer and the longer that frequency is the lower the note is going to be so what happens when a car goes past you the sound waves are effectively getting stretched and that means that because they're stretched they are longer and the pitch goes down the reason I haven't considered this is because there's no speed in this there's nothing that can explain the pitch correction other than somebody going in 
and correcting it. And what I'm going to do is get this off screen and get this on screen. So in this particular case, this G sharp four here was flat and then it got corrected to the G sharp four directly over the line. So for me to seriously consider the Doppler effect with no movement going on, it would have to have been only applied in this split second. So the speed of something changed, uh, even though there's no change and it's happened at this split second. So this is why I don't even cons consider it because there has to be some kind of movement. And even saying about wind, we're inside the Royal Albert Hall here and wind, as I said, I don't know, maybe in the follow up video, wind makes you hear the sound either more quickly or more slowly it's not going to start affecting the picture of what you're hearing. You just hear it earlier if the wind is blowing towards you. And there's one more from the same person just underneath. It says, I should clarify that the movement of air would need to be from the general direction of where the audience member was recording towards the general direction of the vocalist, which seems pretty plausible to me. Even if this was a smaller indoor venue, someone opening a door behind the stage could suck air towards the stage, but fans or speakers blaring towards the band is more my bet. So again, I mean, for this to be plausible, uh, for me, it doesn't make sense because if the movement of air by opening or closing a door affects pitch significantly, then when somebody's performing, nobody would be allowed to leave the venue for any reason, regardless of fire safety rules, because you'd be changing pitch. And if people are allowed to leave the venue, it means that the band would sound like an absolute mess because all of this opening and closing of doors and the changing of air would mean that all of the pitch of everything's getting changed constantly because that airflow is constantly yeah, being affected. And then you could say, well, what about festivals? Why don't they sound like a total mess where you might have a crosswind? And if you have attended a festival, you can hear the sound from another stage, but it doesn't sound like a mess. You can still tell who the band are and what song it is because the pitch is consistent. Even if the wind is blowing in your direction, it's not now adjusting the pitch of the guitar and bass and, you know, the vocals, backing vocals, all that kind of stuff. So again, it's something that to me that that isn't feasible uh, because every gig ever where somebody's opened a door would now be subject to that wind and the changing of pitch and again going back to the other example that i had up on screen it means that somebody would have to time opening the door at this precise point and they'd have to open the door at a speed that only changed the pitch and opening the door wouldn't change pitch but just for argument's sake they'd have to change the pitch by what 10 cents and they'd have to make it go sharp so not like the doppler effect going flat they've now got to make the wind increase the pitch for this particular note so yeah these are all things that i do consider going into an analysis video but i make a judgment by my own common sense and whether i think it's applicable or not and for me yeah it doesn't even come into the equation because you know i've performed live for 20 years i play, played a hell of a lot of gigs and opening and closing doors even in small venues has never been an issue it seems to be a common thread i did get a lot of emails and comments about the doppler effect and it's obviously easier for me to explain it in a video than write out loads of emails so this is quite a long comment i will read it quickly it says phil you may be correct when you assert that the pitch correction was used here but you are fundamentally wrong in your assertion about how pitch works there are many things that can alter produced pitch on the way to being recorded motion between the source of a sound and the microphone can of course create a doppler effect again something that i i, I wasn't it didn't really register a, a temperature gradient in the ambient air can cause a pitch shift Again, it's inside the Royal Albert Hall. I don't think that's going to be applicable either. Uh, these days, the sound is digitized and may be more reliable than a tape drive. However, digital systems are not infallible. Another important point from acoustic science is that not every sound has a pitch, contrary to your assertion. So while your conclusion may be correct, you have overstated or misstated some of the physics behind sound and pitch and recording technology. So... I did actually reply to this saying, um, yeah, thanks. I'm viewing this from 
a musician's perspective, all, all that I know about music, and that's the way that I'm, you know, addressing it all. But just addressing that point about every sound not having a pitch, everything that I've read and everything that I know, and, you know, having done a lot of production, I think every sound does have a pitch. And obviously there's the argument as to whether humans can hear that pitch or not, but it, if we could hear it, we would. Like, you know, really high-pitched things that dogs can hear. That pitch exists, but we can't hear it. So it does have a pitch. And people might say about, you know, explosions, for example. If you see an explosion, at, you know, on or, or through an EQ curve, for example, or you're looking at EQ and you see an explosion, you'll see that obviously the frequency is really low because that's where all those rumbles happen in the first place. But they still register as a frequency and that it might be a set of frequencies, therefore notes, a collection of notes, but it's still a pitch. All of those collections of frequencies are pitches and that's what makes up that sound. So yeah, if you have gone through EQ at any point of a sound and you've made it, you know, a really steep attack so that you're only hearing a very specific part of a sound, you can go up and down it and you'll hear it go because you're isolating that sound or that frequency of the sound, the overall sound. So yeah, I still stand by that, that every sound, every sound does have a pitch. That's what I think is the case. And then you can say, oh yeah, but no, a, you know, a sound that doesn't have tonal pitch, that's another consideration. If you're talking about tonal pitch or not, something that has a tone to it, then an explosion doesn't have a perceivable tone. But if you break it down, it is a collection of pitches. So anyway, probably a quicker video for tonight, but I think it's important to address the questions that have been sent through via emails and in the comments section, uh, especially with this, the Doppler effect, because quite a few have been mentioning it, but then to also state why it's not particularly relevant to this performance from the Royal Albert Hall and not really applicable because nothing was moving. So hopefully it's a little bit clearer to people as to what the Doppler effect is and why it's not applicable to this. Also, there's the coincidental nature of some of the notes being flat, maybe you know three or four in a row, and then for an official release, they're now right over the top of and calibrated to A440 standard pitch equal temperament. But anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. As always, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Rock!